at the start of the project, we just said we want an eco building whatever that is. You know, what is an eco building? It means a lot of different things to different people. We wanted something eco and it wasn't until we met Barbara from Strawworks and Martin from Fairsnape who told us about the Living Building Challenge, told us about the kinds of standards and the kinds of materials and technologies that were available and they helped shape it. We wouldn't have come up with this concept on our own, we wouldn't have thought of straw bales and, and car tyres uh, and cedar shingles. We wouldn't have done that without uh, people who had done this before. The trustees of the park are very environmentally conscious, as you'd imagine. And so they looked for an architect that could build with natural and sustainable materials. And it wasn't just that, they also wanted an architect who could build for the community yeah. so that ordinary people, the people who use the park and their volunteers could actually be physically involved in the building of everything, sure. not just a little token bit, but the whole lot. And that's what's happened. And we had a, uh, a client who, who, who got it, who, yes. who, who understood the, the rationale and philosophy behind it. Yes. And for, for me, one of the real celebrations of this is that its identity with place yeah, is it, hidden into the forest, especially on a day like today when everything's green. The building just disappears into the background. And that's exactly what we were trying to achieve. Absolutely. They asked us to design something that would be in greenbelt land, so that means it has to be exemplary. Yeah and that it was all natural and sustainable and that it wasn't going to damage the planet and the, the land where sure. it sits. Yeah. So already that was before thinking about the Living Building cha Challenge, so we were already yeah. a long way down that path yeah. to meeting the challenge. The Living Building Challenge takes its philosophy from nature and it, it thinks that a building should be based in, in its place, celebrate that place, but also you know, pull in everything from, from the sun, from the wind um, and, and from the ground. And many living building challenges are actually designed to function fr from a tree, um, which is why we start with biophilic uh, design, design workshops to say, yeah, how does this building actually function with, within nature? And taking that metaphor of a, of a flower, the living building challenge is based on seven petals. Each petal has a number of imperatives, and depending on the, the location and the nature of the building, the typology of the building, most are mandatory. So we were thinking about the design of this building, particularly the materials, because we wanted it to be net zero carbon. And that basically means that it needs to be made of plant-based materials. This is essentially what it is. Here we've got a truth window, which is a place where you can see what the wall is really made of. So it's a combination of straw without a framework, which is the load bearing, and straw infill between a timber frame and then timber and glass for the magnificent frontage looking out towards the river. And those are the predominant materials that we use, combined with natural plasters, so mostly lime plaster here. We do use clay, but not in this building because it's a commercial building and then the floor covering is a natural linoleum made of sawdust and linseed oil and the paints are all natural paints. The mastics that we use around the windows are made of linseed oil and mastic sand. So we've really worked very hard at everything that we use and there's really not a lot of other things in this building. The impact on, on the land, the immediate land, by your foundation design, mm. is, is minimal. Yes. It, compared to putting concrete, etc., into the ground. Yeah. Well, it's one of our things. one of our guiding principles is never to use cement in any building, yeah. and we've done that for 25 years. And all our buildings go through building rigs. So here, what we wanted to do was have pillars rather than a strip footing foundation. We wanted to have pillars of uh, what we've got is car tires filled with rammed stone yeah. so that um, you could literally just dig a hole where the tires were going and um, build up from there. Sure. Yeah. And it also means that it's easy for people to construct themselves, yeah. people who are not professional builders. I've been talking about circular economy for recently and I use this as an example. If we were to take this down, we could either compost it mm or it would go back to, back to nature naturally. Mm -hmm. And reuse with, with a parts few, of it. Exactly, the few technical bits we could reuse. Yeah. I mean, we all love this building. Uh, everybody who visits, uh, you know, especially with the view from this beautiful sort of glass terrace, everybody loves it. Uh, we love it. Uh, we just wish, I think, that it was bigger because it's been so popular 
Um, obviously, we have a cafe in part of the building, which you can see behind me. Um, and that has uh, been trading at 200% over what we expected and designed for. I often talk about the success penalty. We have rainwater harvesting here, which was factored for a certain number of people flushing the loos. Obviously, we've been so successful with the cafe that we've got double the number of people flushing the loos and you wish you'd got a bigger tank. Um, those sorts of things are very difficult to, um, to retrofit. Uh, equally, in terms of the building's ventilation, you've got more people in the building, more, more cooking, more food preparation, so the, the heat inside the building is, is greater than we designed for. Um, we rely on a passive exchange of air through the opening of doors and windows, and uh, obviously with, with you know, 50 people in here and staff and a lot of cooking, sometimes it can get a bit hot. Uh, but, um, you know, generally we are in enormously happy. I can't imagine having constructed anything else and anything else having had, of having had such an impact and such a success uh, for us. So, you know, we're delighted.